ma nel caso specifico di Caesar che tipo di emozioni ha voluto trasferire nel personaggio? Grazie. Well, of course, this is the second part of the journey of Caesar as a character. Caesar um, in, in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which is the, the, the origin film before this one, you, you, he's not just um, a, a chimpanzee. This is a chimpanzee who is evolving at a very quick rate. His father, in effect, his surrogate father, was a scientist, a human scientist who was experimenting to find a cure for uh, Alzheimer's. And that drug, had the reverse effect, in fact. It ended up being becoming a virus which wiped out humanity, but accelerated the growth and the emotional intelligence and the physicality and the evolution of apes. So Caesar, in the first movie, I, I've, I've lived with this character before, uh, all the way through from infancy through to a teenagehood, where he suddenly realizes he's pulled away from his human world, this humanity that he's grown up with, and thrown into um, a sanctuary full of apes where he really has to discover himself, his ape side of himself, and then find a way of galvanizing uh, that group of apes and leading them to freedom. So at the beginning of this movie, um, Caesar is now 10 years older, and as you say, he's become a statesman-like figure. Uh, he's created an egalitarian society with, with, uh, with, with now a, a society of apes that is nearly 2,000 strong. And these are made up of gorillas and chimpanzees and orangutans, all who have various different um, ways of being and his job is to bring them all together and find a commonality, a common set of rules, a common language that they can all uh, live by. Um, as I say, he's not a, an authoritarian leader, he doesn't rule with an iron fist, he, he, is, he really is um, the emblem of empathy. He also is well placed as the conflict arises between himself, between the ape community and the human beings because he is uh, because he has lived with humanity, so his worldview is very tolerant of humans as well as apes. Um, and, and that is really the, the approach. He is, as I say, he's placed at the center of this film because he straddles these two different worlds and has to uh, overcome the conflict within himself, but also find a peaceful solution to, to escalating violence with, with the human species, with the acceptance of, of his fellow apes. Eh, se ci può raccontare quali sono eh, i lati diciamo, eh, positivi e negativi, le cose complicate, le cose facili di questa recitazione che si sposa alla tecnica, no? E quindi eh, un, un racconto che ci può fare del dietro le quinte di questa preparazione. Of course. Um, This, this technology performance capture has grown over the last 14 years and it has, has come from a, a place of, it used to be called motion capture and basically the, the way it works is this, an actor puts on a suit with reflective markers and a head mounted camera with the markers on their face and, and basically it's a, it's a different kind of camera system to, to record an actor's performance. So live action cameras are filming the actors and all of the actors are human and, and the ape actors, but also we have these special cameras that can record every single movement of our bodies and every single facial expression. And then in the second part of the process, when the principal photography is finished, the visual effects company are then able to translate our performances to the most minute detail and if, of emotion, of thought, of feeling, all of the acting choices that we make on set with the director and the other actors, and that is then translated onto the faces of these uh, digital apes. So the challenges for this are uh, really, in terms of character for me, uh, the technology is in a way something that you get used to very quickly, you're just acting at the end of the day. Um, but the challenge for, for this particular character of Caesar was in this version of the film, in this uh, part of the journey, was how to evolve Caesar's speech. We wanted to create, and we spent a lot of time uh, workshopping, uh, rehearsing, improvising, of the ape community and how they communicated using sign language because Caesar was taught sign language as, a, as an infant chimpanzee. So we learned American Sign Language but then had to find a way of making that an, uh, a kind of patois ape version of, of sign language. Then, and then um, 
Also, we have uh, facial expressions and gesture, and, and the beginning. Matt Reeves, the director, very much wanted to see this as the evolution of the ape society and the evolution of intelligence and language. And so, we, when we started to use human words, and, and private, interestingly, primatologists have said, you know, it's not impossible and probable, in fact, that apes within a number of thousands of years will be able to speak. It's just that there is a bone in the body at the moment, in the larynx, which prevents them from doing so now that they are evolving. Um, so we had to find ways of, of, of creating language which felt real. And that's all right when you're, when you're saying kind of words which are filled with emotion, but when Caesar's shouting, go, or I just do not want war, or, or something that is fueled by emotion. But the second half of the movie where Caesar is having to speak philosophically and intellectually, that, that is a very uh, complex um, set of uh, you know, ideologies and, and thoughts that, it, that needs to feel real. So that was the big challenge really for me in this movie, was how to make talking apes seem real in, a, in an environment and the way that the film was shot, which, which feels very real. I mean, everything about this movie was uh, Matt Reeves' attempt to bring it away from being a fantasy into reality. So we shot on loca location, everything was shot on real location. And um, the way that the Michael Saracen, the director of photography, lit everything was very natural light. So there was nothing fantastical about it in many ways. It felt and should have felt very real.